How's it going everyone? It's Jay Blader back on the Battlecraft SMP. This is a Cobblemon creation pack that you can download now on Modrith. A few of the developers of Cobblemon play on here and I'm excited to be here with some talented builders and players. Without a further ado, let's get into the episode. I'm starting in my Terrarium base and the last few episodes we've been spending a lot of time EV training. I've been working on some teams. I've also been experimenting with a better end. Look at the way the light casts through this. That's, that's freaking cool. I've got like the mushroom caps here and then light above it. Really cool stuff. So we were goofing with the, the fancy magic from the better end last time. And I upgraded and got some tools and I wanted to talk a little bit how. You need to make this a Tyrnium anvil. And to make that, you've got to have all the smithing templates. So I went back into the game or into the end and got all the smithing templates. These are all the ones that you're going to need. This Eternium upgrade is how I get you get the anvil. And once you get that, you're going to need to make a uh, netherite hammer, uh, which is uh, a little brutal. I'm not going to lie. But to, to do that, you just need to get one piece of netherite and a diamond hammer. Once you make that, in order to actually make Eternium stuff, you're going to need to make an Eternium smith hammer. And then once you make an Eternium smith hammer, you can make like all the other elements. This mod is really neat because of all of the kind of individual stuff that you can make. Like this really good pickaxe. Again, you'll need the smithing template, the pickaxe head, and the leather wrapped stick. Uh, also, of course, we have the crystallite armor here. But if you want to make the Eternium armor, then that's a really good option too. So this mod adds a lot of stuff. And it's cool to have on the Cobblemon server. The integration with some of the spawns in Cobblemon is really, really cool and fascinating. I had a good time goofing with it, but that's enough of that. I've also been EV training my team. Let's head over here to the pasture and we'll take a look at some Pokemon I've been EV training. Here are some of the Pokemon that I could use if we got a tournament coming up. First of all, we got an Annihilate here. I have uh, EV trained it kind of a tanky build, but it doesn't get bulk up in this game. So it's still good. Still really, really powerful, but without bulk up, not as great. We've got a Garnivore here, kind of standard special attack build. A Roserade, this is kind of a Spikes spe slash special attacker build. Really good uh, way to lead off of party. And of course, we've got a Mamoswine. Uh, this is kind of a tankier uh, Ice Shard kind of, kind of build. And he is very square here. Not very rotund, but very cube. I've also got Fortress, Dugtrio, Jellicent, and Lilligant that I'm using and leveling up as we play. Sleep, 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 sleep. There's still a few more competitive Pokemon that I'm keeping an eye out for. And whenever I see something with good IVs, we do have this add-on that we can check the IVs of Pokemon. Like, look at that, 73%, not bad. And I'm always doing that. Before we get started building today, I just wanted to say I've also been doing a lot of resource collecting. As you can see from all these items in my inventory, every time I hit, you know, this button, the, the numbers go up because I'm constantly collecting stuff, including some new berries that affect friendship, so I can get some friendship evolution Pokemon. Um, finding those in the wild or making those takes some time. Also grabbing some s different types of stones. I've been running around and uh, getting like I needed a sunstone uh, for Lilligant and just kind of flying around looking in the high altitudes for different stones and different biomes. Been doing that in the last update is I had to do a ton of mining including netherite mining and diamond mining. So I've created a drop chute here and a water pillar here with kelp. This will just help speed up the process of me uh, going down to the mine so that it's hopefully not as uh, obnoxious of climbing a ladder for like five minutes. Well, that is enough of uh, the introduction today. We're going to hop right into building and I have an idea of what we're going to do for this end portal, uh, not end portal, the end magic, better end building and these little side outlines that I've lined up in the last uh, last few episodes when we've been working over here. I also am going to end up moving my portal. I was going to put the portal in here, but then the end stuff just works. So the portal's going to go into its own building slash room eventually. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think it's fine for there right now. And I want to bring a few of the end blocks into this area at some point with the, within the landscaping. But we're going to start slow, and I'm going to uh, start with these little little buildings on the side, or little structures, I should call them, on the side. For everyone guessing that they were going to be teacups, you would be correct. So we've got three little teacups now. They're supposed to be kind of china porcelain teacups. So I went with some smooth quartz. And then for the little accent of the uh, design, I went with some blue uh, glazed terracotta. I think this works okay. 
I think the color is right. And we've got little teacup handles on them, which is fun. Let me do a little flyover. Hello. And I'll show you what is on the inside. Uh, the inside of them, or two of them, is packed mud. So if you're flying over, then you can see the, uh, I guess it could be like tea or coffee. I don't know. I feel like the packed mud is, is close enough in color that it gets the point across. So now that we've got these three in place, the next thing to do is, of course, build this big old circle here. And what is it going to be? Well, you can probably guess it. A kettle. I'm just building this out of my mind, by the way. We're not, we're not doing any creative shenanigans, but I think I can get something pretty close. So let's get going. And there we have it. Which one of you guys guessed tea kettle with teacups? Because whoever voted that, you are the winner. I switched out the blue uh, glazed terracotta for some light gray. The light gray obviously has a light gray color in it. I feel like that matches the shades of the quartz a lot better. And it just has hints of that turquoise. And personally, I think it's a lot better. So we went with that. And the main building here is a giant tea kettle. I think this is the best I'm going to be able to do in Minecraft. There are just some limitations in the base game. I think it actually looks like a tea kettle from above, which is pretty funny on the mini map. So hopefully people will be able to tell what it is. We just need an entrance to this building, which I think I'm going to put over here on the, like this side, what, what is this, the south, south side? Yeah, we'll just put like a little doorway for me to get into. So the next thing that's got to happen is, of course, some terraforming around it. I don't want to just leave the podzoil and rooted dirt mixture. Um, I think the uh, podzoil and rooted dirt mixtures can be really nice, but I want the terraforming to be more purposeful. And we're going to be introducing some of the endstone blocks. In fact, let me open my inventory. Uh, I think I have some of the kind of covered endstone. That's what we're going to be introducing here. So we got end moss, and I've got a ton of this stuff. And I think the end moss, yeah, see, this is already looking fantastical. I think end moss, grass blocks, maybe some of this jade stone. I'm just kind of grabbing blocks in that kind of blue-green color. So I don't know if that block works. But yeah, the jungle moss and the end moss obviously go really well together. And then there might be a way for us to kind of go back back towards this uh, grass I think could work so that's what I'm gonna be playing around with maybe something kind of like this and it brings out that turquoise color which I think is cool so hopefully you can see the vision here just a few hints of the end moss I think will be enough I could do the entire area in end moss but I got a feeling that's gonna be a little much then we can grab a few of the decoration blocks, like this creeping moss. Um, in fact, I can just search in here, better end, and all of the kind of like little things we collected last time in the, in the end will come up. Let's grab just some of these at random. I don't know which ones are going to work the best, but we can place some of these down. Uh, obviously, the grass, we can place these. Some of these maybe look pretty nice. Maybe a purple one. These ferns look fancy. Yeah, so you can see that's kind of, I think, what I'm going to do with this area. And then intermingle it back into the grass or the natural terrain. These things emit light too, which is, which is really nice. So that in combination with the tea kettles, I think will make this area feel uh, very custom. Like a custom biome, which is uh, something that I enjoy doing a lot. Making stuff feel very, very lived in, very custom. Yes, very, very nice. And in here, of course, is our end portal stuff, the better end stuff that we were goofing with last time. And I think I'm just going to leave the majority of this as is. Maybe add some of the fur to the wall. Yeah, see, that is starting to feel a little fantastical. Maybe even adding some of the, uh, some like height variation in here with some end moss. 
kind of as kind of as if this area was uh, infested or something. That's that's the look I'm going with. And I'll eventually be able to kind of carry this aesthetic over into some new terrariums once we get that stuff up and running. So areas like this, you know, only takes me, what, a minute to do something like this? But I think it's very nice. I might need to go get some more end moss and stuff at some point, but for now, I think it's fine. So I'm going to terraform this area up around front, up around my portal gonna end up carrying it all the way around this and then I'd like to go back and do this side over here I've just got some lights under um, under some leaf blocks but I think it would be nice to also terraform this side in the same matching style so some work to be done but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it off camera and then show you the progress also I'm looking for a nine tail with drought that's good or good IVs let's see 17 21 15 not bad but looking for a Vulpix or a nine tails because I'm running a chlorophyll on this Lilligant, and it would also allow the solar blade to uh, to fire in one shot. So getting something with sun set up would be great. Anyway, enough Pokemon, back to the, the Minecraft buildy stuff. I am a terraforming fiend. I guess it's more like custom biome, but this is the stuff that I enjoy in Minecraft the most, actually. It's uh, simple, I don't have to think a whole lot, but it just comes together really great. So again, using the end moss to kind of create a gradient with the grass blocks, adding in the different ferns, the, the creeping mosses, the umbrella moss, and kind of trying to add it in to the other terrain that I've got here with the azalea and the oak leaves. The teacups are now standing out, and this place looks great at night, which it's, uh, it's just still early day now, so I'll have to take another clip at night, but with all of these mosses glowing, it just looks super, super cool. Of course, we're going to have another building here eventually, so not terraforming this area around the side here, though. You can see that I've got the little entrance here, and terraforming around the back still kind of needs to happen with this part. I might wait, though, because cutting down these trees is really obnoxious since they're really tall. I have to, like, stack up, but there is actually a little tool in the Create mod that I think can help us cut down these trees a little bit better, and that is the saw. And so let's get started with the very basic, basic, basics of Create. I am not a Create genius. There are way better Create players on here. So if you're like, oh, I want to learn the Create mod, um, might want to find someone else. And I understand. It's a fun mod, but I'm learning one step at a time. So if you want to learn along with me, then I guess you can uh, you can keep on watching and we'll, we'll see what we can discover. Before I begin create create modding, <laughs> this is this place at night. I just wanted to show the lighting coming off of all the moss types on the porcelain tea set. So nice. I think it matches really well with our other container. I like containers, so this is going to be fun. If you haven't figured out the theme for the base yet, uh, it may have something to do with different containers. Well, I've worked up a little platform of light gray terracotta here that we can start working on the create stuff. The first thing we're going to need to do is make some andesite alloy. Easy enough. Then let's make some shafts. Let's make some of these. And we'll grab some planks. That should be enough of the basics to get started crafting some stuff. Like, I think we can do this. We'll make some cog wheels. Uh-huh. Aha, it's like that. One water wheel. Two water wheel three water wheel and I like upgrading them to the large ones one two three it's gonna have some running off water I'll want the power to come off of that got some water sources down and just like that we got some some hydraulics going okay a quite rudimentary power source but it will create a lot of power for us a lot of torque so we're just gonna stick some shafts off of that so let's see what's the first thing we need to make okay I want to make one of these saws and that's just uh, an Iron sheets, thal thalassium or iron, andesite casing. Perfect. For that, we're going to need a press. Uh-huh, one of these. Also going to make a depot. Find that helps out a lot. Let's just go and place it right here. I have cheesed the cogs to make them much faster. Every time you go from a large to small, it gets faster. So we'll place that there. Uh, I did the wrong thing. Place this here and there. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we got a very fast mechanical press. We'll grab some of these here iron ingots, place them on there, and then there we go. We got iron sheets. Now we got the, we can craft one of these. Yep, 
really really cheap all right and that's it that's all the create madness that we have to do for today but actually while i'm here i think i want to create some ultra balls see we need a gold sheet and that's from create but that should be easy enough let's grab some gold i've got plenty we'll do the same thing place that down it gets bonked we got some gold sheets now if i put these in here and do one of these there's two stacks of ultra balls easy enough now, I'm pretty sure this should work in this pack, but what's nice about the hand crank and at least on the other server I play in with the saw is that we can cut down some trees. Oh, I didn't cut down the whole tree. Maybe this tree's too big. Let's try a smaller tree. We have vein mining on Olympus Craft too, which helps cut down trees a lot faster. Okay, let's see if it'll cut down this entire tree. Yes, the small trees it can manage. Okay. Well, that will still save me a lot of time. That is a lot faster than climbing up and down the tree. And there's no durability that I have to deal with, so this is perfect. What's nice, though, is that I've got a few AFK farms, and one that I wanted to show off. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. We got to check this Hariyama. Okay, it's not super great. W um, something that I set up a while ago, and using the tree membrane here as, like, a glass texture, is this is just a really easy automatic honey farm. And, yes, I set this up uh, probably, like, a, a long, okay, a long time ago. Oh. Yes, a very, very long time ago. The reason, you can see I've got a bunch of stuff. The reason why is that uh, honey is very useful in this pack for a variety of things. Mostly the healing items. Like, if I look up revive, you'll see that they take honey and honey bottles. Max revives take multiple revives. So, honey is got a, got a use, and there's a few different ways to get it. But I found that just this really easy vanilla honey farm is is the best to do it's a great little cheap farm that you can set up basically on day one or two we've got a skeleton farm so the dispensers are cheap and now that that has been like running in the background when i'm doing stuff like the create things or the terraforming that's always running which is perfect anyway guys thanks so much for tuning in to this episode on the battlecraft smp I'm so glad each and every one of you guys decided to tune in and watch me do some building today. I've got some work to do off camera preparing for the next build and preparing for the next Pokemon adventure that is set to happen. Some terraforming mostly. You see those trees behind me? A bunch of those got to go, which means we're going to have to expand the Magnum torches. And of course, there's always Pokemon things to do like EV train, catch new things and level up my Pokemon. Oh no, there's a pillager patrol over there. I don't want to deal with them. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.